User Interface Tour. In this video, we'll take a look at the different sections of the service and the interface controls in each one. Let's start out by reviewing the common interface buttons and information that you will see from every screen. On the top right, you will see the name of the user who is logged in. Click on the username to bring up a menu to sign out. The left sidebar has tabs for each section so you can easily jump back to the home screen, search for files or cases, go to the cases section, the files section, view the recycling bin, or go to the configuration pages. When you first log in, you will start at the home page. From here, you can search for a case or file based on the name, description, tags, or other criteria. You can also see any recent cases you have updated in the activities list. From the search section, you can enter keywords on the top of the page, view a map to see any cases or files associated with the geographic location or address, or use the search tools to refine your list of results. Clicking on the search criteria, you can choose if you want to view cases, files, or both, and can filter the results based on the category, time frame, case status, case association, file association, and device assignment. The category field lists all the categories you have created and multiple ones can be selected. For the date and time field, you can choose cases or files from any time, within a set number of days, weeks, months, or years, or where the start date and time of the case or file fall within a specific period. You can also change the search to filter based on the created or upload date and time. By default, the search fields are set to look for both cases and files, all categories, where the case status is open, and the date and time stamp can be from any time. No filtering is done based on the associations or device assignment. You do not need to rerun your search when you change the search criteria filters. The results are immediately applied to the list of results below. Click on a thumbnail from the search results to view that case or file. Looking at the Cases page, this is the same search as we saw when looking at the Home page, where you can search for a case based on the case number, description, or other details, or you can create a new case from here. The results list from the search behaves in the same way as the search screen. Once you click on a case to edit it, there are a few other controls and information sections to consider. On the top is our case name and our buttons to close a case or view the case menu. From the menu, we can select the audit trail to see who has made any changes to the case recently or delete the case from the service. Below that, there is the general case information section. This is where you can find the owner, record and incident numbers, the status of the case, the category, and the department the case belongs to. You can also see the start and end date and time for the duration of the case, a description of the case, and any tags that can be used for searching purposes. The location is either based on geographic coordinates or can be an address. The map icon on the right of location can be used to search and find a location on a map. In the map controls, use the search box on top or click and drag on the map to move it using the plus and minus on the lower corner to zoom in and out. Below the location is where you can see the last time the case was modified and by who. Put a check in the Protect from Deletion box to keep the case from accidentally being erased. The right side of the case has our list of users who can view, edit, or manage the case. Use the drop-down menu to change the permission level for a user, or click on the X next to their name to remove them. Use the plus to add more users to the case. Below that, you have the files list for any data that has been associated with this case. Click on the plus to add more files, or drag them into the files box. Click on the menu button next to the file name for options to download or remove the file from the case, or redact the video clip if this is a video file. You can also select multiple files by checking the box on the top left corner of the thumbnail and using the group download or remove file buttons below the list. Clicking on a thumbnail will show a preview of a video or bring you to the file information for any other file type. Moving on to the file section, we have the same search screen and criteria, but the search is configured to only view files by default. 
Once you've clicked on a file, you'll be presented with more information. On the top of the screen, the file name is presented, which can be edited from here. On the other side of the file name, there are the buttons to download the file to local storage, or view a menu with other options. From the menu, we can see the audit trail for that file, which shows if anyone has viewed or performed any actions on the file, and delete the file from the service. Some files can be read by the service, and if so, you'll be presented with a preview window below the file name. If you cannot preview a file from here, you can download the file and try from your local machine. If the file has the location set, you'll see a picture-in-picture -picture window of the map, which you can click on to toggle between the preview image or video and the map. Some body-worn cameras and other devices collect GPS data and associate it with the video file. The GPS path and current location marker are visible on the map. The file information is listed below the preview, including the ID, file name, file size if available, who uploaded the file, and when it was uploaded. In the general section, you can see the description that was added when the file was uploaded, the start and end date and time of the file, the associated category, any cases the file has been linked to, and tags, which are keywords that can be used for searching. Below that, you can set the location, either as geographic coordinates, an address, or a spot that can be chosen on a map. Files can be automatically deleted when they're no longer needed, and the scheduled deletion date is included on the bottom of the list, as well as a checkbox to protect the file from being deleted. Finally, on the top right, you can see the users who have permission to access the file. This can be inherited from the case it was assigned to, or overridden for manual control. User permissions can be set to View Only, View and Download, Edit, or Manage Files. From the Recycle Bin section, we can see any files or cases that have been deleted. We can use the search criteria to limit the list of results to cases or files, the date it was deleted, and who deleted the case or file. We can search for a particular case or file using the search box above as well. From the list below, we can click on the Restore button to place the case or file back in the active list and keep it from being purged from the service. Let's move on to take a look at the parts of the Configuration section. You can switch between any of the sections using the header names at the top of the page. Starting with the Users tab, on the top of the page you can click on the plus next to the section names to add a user or group. The search options are either next to it or below depending on the page width. You can search for keywords and choose to filter what kind of user entity to search for, users, groups, or both. The results list below will be updated based on your search filters. Click on a user or group to modify it. Adding or editing an entity from the user section will prompt you for all the fields required, such as the username, status, or the groups the user will belong to. Any field that can accept multiple entries will have a plus icon next to it. Click on it to add more items to the list, or click on the X next to a list item to remove it. You can save or cancel creating or editing an entity, and the user's passwords can be reset from this page. Looking at Departments, you can add a department by clicking on the plus icon on the top of the page next to the Configuration section list. We also have a search field, but since there's only one entity type being shown here, there are no search filters that can be applied. From the Department Creation page, click on the pencil icon next to the name to modify it, and click on the plus icon below to add access policies for new cases for the department you are creating. Use the Save button on the bottom right to keep the department, or hit Cancel to go back to the department list. From the list of existing departments, click on one to modify it, which will display the existing information much like the department creation page. Under the category section, we also have a search field for keywords, but without any filters. Click on the plus icon to add a category, where you can click on the pencil icon to rename it, and you can choose the status of the category, either enabled or disabled. You can also set the retention period for any files listed in this category. This can be represented in days or years, and can also be set to never delete the files. You can modify an existing category by clicking on it in the list, which will present you with the same information. 
The Devices tab can be used to keep track of any body-worn cameras or other hardware associated with the service. You can use the Search field or the Search criteria to narrow down the list in case you have many results. On the right you can see how many device licenses you have and how many devices have been activated on the service so far. Click on a device to see more details, and you can assign the device to a user from this page and activate or deactivate the device. Let's take a look at the Security Policy section next. From this section, we have different functions that can be done with the service, and can add users or groups to these sections to give them permission to perform these functions. Click on the plus icon next to the function name to add a user or group, and click on the X next to a user or group to remove access to this function. For files not associated with cases, we must also choose the permission level to give the users or groups we add to this section. Finally, the Retention Policies section lets you define the default retention period for cases and files in the Recycle Bin, and also set specific retention values depending on how the file was added to the service, or the category the file is in. If a file is affected by multiple retention periods, the longest time range will be used.